In 2016, id Software, the inventors of the 3D first-person shooter, rebooted the Doom franchise after over a decade of dormancy. 2004's Doom 3 had a mixed critical reception. Players and critics alike felt like it strayed a bit too far into survival horror territory, at the expense of the frenetic action Doom was so well known for. 2016's Doom seemed purpose-built to put to rest any suspicion that the franchise was drifting from its roots. The 8th Gen Doom reboot was an unrepentantly old-school, fast-paced gore-fest. If you asked someone in 1993 what they'd expect Doom from the future to look like, it wouldn't be far off from this. Critical to its success was the strong technical foundation that Doom was built on. The 2016 franchise reboot was the first game to run on id Software's new id Tech 6 engine, the first iteration of their engine designed from the ground for the 8th console generation. The game was hailed as a technical masterpiece. It was not only one of the best looking titles on console, it was also one of the best performing, delivering a nigh unlocked 60 FPS, even on the Xbox One, without undue compromises to image quality. Four years later, at the very end of the eighth console generation, id released a sequel, the id Tech 7 powered Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is an evolution of an already excellent title in just about every way. As the first title running on the id Tech 7 engine, it's also a demonstrator for id's upcoming work on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 in the years to come. Let's take a look at what makes Doom Eternal tick on a technical level. Engine Overview As mentioned, Doom Eternal is the first game to run on the id Tech 7 engine. In some ways, id Tech 7 is an iterative upgrade over id Tech 6, but in other ways, it's a significant overhaul. The most significant change to the engine has been the rollback of the Mega Texture system. Mega Textures were introduced as far back as Enemy Territory Quake Wars in the 2000s. The technology was seen as a solution to a major 7th gen technical problem, the lack of VRAM to display high resolution, unique textures. Conventional systems used texture tiling, where small individual texture images would be rotated, blended, and tiled across surfaces. The limited VRAM allocated on both consoles, 512 megabytes of shared memory on the Xbox 360 and just 256 megabytes of VRAM on the PlayStation 3, limited the variety in size of tiled textures. The Mega Texture solution essentially created one gigantic texture for an entire level, with coordinates referenced in so that high quality unique texture work could be streamed in and out when needed. While Mega Texture Systems delivered great results in 2010's Rage on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, its main reason for existing, limited VRAM, wasn't a factor in the 8th gen. The legacy tech, however, was maintained in id Tech 5 games on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, like Wolfenstein New Order and in 2016 Doom. This resulted in that particular game exhibiting the Mega Texture Systems' biggest drawback, texture pop-in, even on systems with fast storage. Low quality texture assets would visibly get swapped out for higher quality assets at certain distances and over certain durations of time. With id Tech 7, however, id Software has finally taken mega textures out of the picture. id Tech 7 deploys a conventional texturing system based on tiling and blending high quality texture assets. Because the individual texture tiles and their diversity is so much higher, the texture work in Doom Eternal looks far better than in the 2016 Doom. Moreover, the game brings down the former's gargantuan file size. High quality mega textures used up a huge amount of storage space. By eliminating the technology, id Software has managed to reduce Doom Eternal's file size by half relative to the 2016 title. With regards to lighting, Doom Eternal uses a hybrid forward slash deferred renderer, similar to 2016 Doom. This approach combines the large number of dynamic light sources enabled by deferred rendering with the performance and flexibility of a forward renderer. The lighting system really comes into play in combination with Doom Eternal's particle effects, with a large number of dynamic particle effects acting as emissive light sources. Mesh quality and texture work. Doom Eternal pushes a remarkable 10 times as much geometry per scene as the 2016 iteration of the franchise. We're talking as many as 90 million polygons per scene. If all this geometry was rendered at one time, performance would come grinding to a halt, even on today's fastest PCs. To address this, id Software developed an advanced geometry culling solution that loads in and loads out geometry based on both the player view and the level of details factor. Doom Eternal innovates in terms of LOD transitions. The game switches between different LOD levels depending on how much geometry is visible at a per-pixel level. 
so that geometry on scene is only ever as complex as the screen can actually display. This means that not only is performance great, models are of as high a quality as possible at a given in-game distance from the player. With regards to texture work, as mentioned, the biggest change had to do with mega textures being scrapped. They've been replaced with high quality 2K and 4K texture assets. Thanks to the removal of mega texturing, Doom Eternal's texture assets are far more diverse than they are in 2016's Doom. And many in-game textures are of a significantly higher quality. Best of all, the 2016 Doom's texture pop-in, especially noticeable when running the game from a hard drive, has been completely eliminated. Particles and Lighting High quality lighting has always been a strong point for id Software. 2004's Doom 3 was one of the earliest games to feature a fully dynamic shadow system by way of stencil shadows. Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal both build on a solid technology foundation here. A revamped culling system for light sources allowed id to place substantially more dynamic lights on scene at a time, by more efficiently culling out distant light effects that players wouldn't see. GPU accelerated particle rendering is deployed, with high particle densities. Many effects like explosions are fully lit for a greater level of dynamism. PC Key Enhancements From its earliest days, id Software has always been a PC-centric developer. While the 2016 Doom looked great and performed well on all platforms, PC was by far the platform of choice. This has not changed at all with Doom Eternal. The PC version offers a number of settings and features that set it apart from the game's console iterations. For starters, the frame rate is fully unlimited. Doom Eternal is not a CPU intensive game. This means that, with sufficiently powerful hardware, frame rates in excess of 200 FPS are possible, especially at lower resolutions. It also means that 4K 60 FPS gameplay is possible, even on hardware like the RTX 2070 Super that's better suited to 1440p. Settings presets vary from low to ultra nightmare. The biggest difference in performance comes from Doom Eternal's water and reflection quality settings. Both of these netted performance gains in the double digits when dropping down to high or medium presets. While a range of tweakable settings is present, Doom Eternal's excellent optimization means that most PC users will not have to compromise much, if anything at all. Value-oriented hardware like the RX 580 and GTX 1060 easily power past 1080p 60fps, and are even good for 1440p play when settings are dropped down to high. RTX 2060 Superclass hardware easily runs the game at 4K. If you have a high-resolution monitor paired with an upper mid-range graphics card, this game delivers one of the best 4K experiences around. How do the consoles stack up? Before we proceed ahead, we wanted to make a quick note. On the console front, we analyzed the game's performance by taking some sample scenes from the game and running it through Teardrop, an open source software. Note that this tool only gives us a mere demonstration of the game's performance, because an exact one-to-one -one representation of performance can only be provided by the developers themselves since they have access to a vast array of tools and profilers. Also note that this analysis only considers the campaign mode. Through a combination of dynamic resolution scaling, excellent optimization, and a thorough anti-aliasing solution, Doom Eternal scales well across a wide range of console hardware. The target here is to maintain 60fps, so image quality is sacrificed to an extent to ensure high frame rates. The Xbox One X delivers the best experience. Resolution tops out at 1800p on Microsoft's platform, with dips below in more intense scenes. The console stays at the upper bounds of the resolution scale most of the time, however, leading to a relatively crisp image on 4K panels. The PS4 Pro compromises image quality a bit more, topping out at 1440p with dips. While the presentation is noticeably softer on 4K panels, Doom Eternal's excellent temporal anti-aliasing makes for a reasonably smooth image. The con maker is present at this gathering. When outside of her domain, she is by all accounts indestructible. How can 
this be? No man can pass through the gate! This stops nothing! The sacrament of this world to the great Khan Maker will be made, and the energy will be restored once again.
conclusion. Id has done it again. At the end of the 8th gen, when other titles compromise on resolution and detail just to scrape by at 30 FPS, Id managed to deliver a near generational improvement to visual quality, all the while maintaining a silky smooth 60 FPS update on all target platforms. Just like the 2016 outing, Doom Eternal is a demonstration of just how much a talented dev team can accomplish through optimization and intelligent deployment of technology. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.